from JD News, live from Draper, Utah, Thursday, April 2nd, 2020. This is Good Morning, Juan Diego. Good morning, JD. It's uh, April 2nd. Anybody playing April Fool's joke on you yesterday? Oh, I got so many emails from students with that challenge. You'll all be getting some gift cards. There are some pretty stellar ones. My favorite one is move all the dishes and stuff around in the kitchen to fool your parents. Like when your mom goes to the cabinet and she's expecting glasses and there's a toaster. I love that one. It's oh, kind that's of fun. Great. That's so. great. So we've been talking about courage. Courage is the word of the week. And we've been focusing a little bit on handling your fears first. And then secondly, stepping into the arena, the arena. And we're going to talk a little bit about that later. But first, we're going to do the opening prayer with Mr. Saltz. And then secondly, we're going to hear, what, uh, a violin number. Yes, sounds great. Great. Take it away, Mr. Saltz. Thank you, uh, Mr. Brunetti and Dr. Colosimo. Um, I've been asked to lead uh, prayer today, so I'm going to ask all of you to join me in the serenity prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Amen. So I hope all of you, uh, in, in along the lines of the theme that we've uh, got going this week, is to show courage in everything you do, whether that's your online work, whether that's battling through the isolation and the the social distancing and, um, you know, really embracing your families and friends uh, to help you be uh, the best person you can in these very difficult times. Thank you. We're really happy today to welcome Ms. Viasios today to our, our faculty feature. This is my third year. So and tell years. us what, uh, what, what, the, what groups you head up. So I have the elementary orchestra. I have two middle school orchestras. I have a high school orchestra. And I have high school guitar as well, which was new this year. Honestly, I think just being online alone is kind of like a it's brought a lot of like, it's, ha it's it required a lot of courage for me because I'm not a huge technology person and I always have a little bit of hesitation when it comes to filming myself or recording anything. And so it's been a courage, an act of courage for me to kind of put myself out there instead of just like, in front of the classroom, you know what I mean? So would it be safe to say that even what we're doing right now is an act of courage for you? Kind of, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's great, so courage comes in all sizes and shapes. Yeah. That they've stepped up to the challenge. Um, a lot of the kids that I, I've, I thought were a lot more um, shy, I guess, is a common kind of gray area, but um, that they've, you know, film themselves recording, and they're comfortable with that. And I was really surprised by it, so. Just fear of uh, making sure that what I do for my students is um, a valuable experience for them. Um, it's such a new territory for me because uh, I'm just, it's, it's a performing arts group. You have to play together. The music that you learn together makes sense. When you take it apart and you play by yourself for weeks and weeks and weeks without anything else, it seems very bland, very alone. And sometimes it doesn't even make sense. Um, so it's kind of, I'm hoping that these online lessons or tasks that I have them do hopefully bring a little more value to their lives in terms of like meaningfulness and realizing, yeah, we're a team and what we do together is so valuable in and of itself. So I don't know, I think just fear of being able to make this a worthwhile thing for them.
Thank you, Miss Viasilis. That was a, a, a beautiful rendition. I love the Ave Maria on the violin. So that was. You said Viasilis well. <laughs> it's hard been, to say. I've so. been practicing. Can you say it like ten times in a row without stumbling? No, I'm Five. not. Five. Try three. Viasilis, 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 Viasilis. Pretty good. It's pretty good. Pretty good. What do you want to talk about today? Well, I've been talking about this uh, idea of courage all week, and I wanted to read a quote, a very famous quote, a lot of our students know this, by President Roosevelt. He mm -hmm. made this speech back in 1910 in uh, Paris, France, and it's lasted over 100 years. I think most people know it's, it's about the man in the arena. The title of it's called The Man in the Arena, and it goes like this. It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles, or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena. His face is marred by dust and sweat and blood. Who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again because there is no effort without error and shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do the deeds. Who knows great enthusiasms, great devotions. Who spends himself in a worthy cause. Who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement. And who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly. So that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. Theodore Roosevelt. Such a powerful, powerful, there's a reason why it has been so profound for over a hundred years. It, you get chills when you, when you read that, don't you? It just resonates so deeply about what's really, really important. It's, you know, it's very easy to be the guy in the bleachers crit critiquing everything, you know. So we began this week talking about there is no courage without fear. And people who think they're courageous and say, well, I'm never afraid, are actually just frauds. And that the two go hand in hand. In order to be courageous, you also have to express your vulnerability. And then today we talked a little bit about getting into the arena. And I think what happens, this, we say this on our coffee cups, and we say it, I think, in a campus ministry, is that we want students to be seen, heard, and encouraged. And we want people to be seen, heard, and encouraged. And I think what happens when you get into the arena, and you're there bloodied and battered, and you're by yourself, you're seen. And what that means is people are going to criticize. Oh, totally, without a doubt. Yeah. And so to be one of the one of the aspects of being courageous is you have to live with the fact that people are not going to be nice to you. Being courageous and being popular are not necessarily two. They don't come necessarily in the same boat. That's for sure. So. But I think what Roosevelt said at the end is, you know, the credit belongs to the man in the arena and not the ones who, who know either. They, they don't know victory, they don't know defeat because they sit on the sideline and all they do is criticize. And so this is an example of another step in what it means to be courageous. First of all, you have to recognize your vulnerabilities. Secondly, you have to step into the arena. And third, you have to recognize you're gonna be criticized and it's you're gonna be challenged, but it I, doesn't matter. And I think there's a big part of that is it much, it's much easier to do that when you start off with thinking, I wonder what it's like to stand in his shoes or her shoes right now, um, and coming from that place of compassion. And I think during all that we're going through right now, uh, being in the arena with some compassion and some tenderness for one another will probably go a long, long way. It's not a perfect, it, nothing about what's happening right now is perfect by any means. It's messy. It doesn't mean that it has to be unkind. But what we want is we want everyone to be in the arena. Totally. And we totally. know that that's where the credit belongs yeah. for, the, for the, those that are battered and bloodied. But it's better than to be the ones who never step in the arena, who do not know victory and they don't know defeat. You know, I am fond of my challenges. We're getting a little backed up on our gift cards, but I'm going to put out another challenge today. Students, print out the speech, and I want you to take a photograph of yourself. May I see that, Dr. Klosmo? I want you to take a photograph of yourself holding the man in the arena speech, but it gets to come to me with an email describing what that means to you. 
So that's a big assignment. Print out the speech, take a photograph of yourself with it, and then attach it to an email that says, this is what it means to me. There might be a really super duper gift card in it for you. So I'll leave you at that. You spent a lot of money on gift cards. Mr. Tack is rolling his eyes cost. back there. <laughs> He's like, oh my God. <laughs> All right, so how we're going to end? What do we have to say to the end? Oh, we need to get subscriptions. We need people to subscribe. We're up to 597 subscriptions. We're trying to get over 1,000. So students, get online, watch the video, and hit the subscribe button. That's the first thing. What's the second thing? Take care of yourselves. Oh, no, the second thing is juniors, you got registration today. Make sure you're on board with registration, okay? It's from 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock today. So get online. You guys have a big registration hurdle ahead of you today. It's going pretty smoothly, but you got to do it, okay? Last thing is? Take care of yourself, take care of one another, one another and take care of Juan Diego. Make it a great day, you guys. <laughs>